you would kindly stay after church today, we can get the table set up and whatnot. Um, let us get the equipment out of the way first, but um, we need help. It, it goes so much. Many hands make light the work. How many times have you heard that? So please help that. Um, I think that is all the announcements. So let's sing. Holy God, we pray for thy name.
thank you for giving us this opportunity to change lives by becoming generous caregivers of the resources that you first gave us. Well, in our hearts, not just on Sunday, but every day. We dedicate these offerings this day. In Christ our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. on vacation. <laughs> so Paul will give the children. <laughs> this is not a children's sermon. <laughs> swing now. We pray for everyone who is traveling. Keep them safe, Lord. Keep them safe wherever they go, however they go, in airplanes and boats, on the highway. Lord, we ask you to then bring them safely home. We ask you to be helpful to all of us to help to carry us through life in a way that is safe for ourselves and safe for others. We pray for those who are actively engaged in keeping us healthy and making those who are ill well again. We pray for our church here at Rockbrook. We pray for our event coming up this week, our garage sale. We pray for everything that will happen here, all the people who will trod these hallways and these rooms. We pray that if they have not found you, that somehow in some wonderful way they might find you in their few moments here through our hospitality and through our smiles and good wishes. We pray to you, Lord, for our world. We pray to you for our church. We pray for you for our community. We pray for you at this very special two weeks when the world has gathered, at least the athletes have gathered, to come together in enjoy 
in the celebration of athletics, in the celebration of unity among people from all over the world, in the celebration that a smile is a universal greeting that can be shared with anyone, and the spirit may flow from you. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray that you will keep us safe, keep us healthy, keep us engaged, and most important, Lord, keep us in love with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land for which they were going. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. A large crowd was following Jesus because they saw signs. I guess it's nice to know that somebody was paying attention. Let's face it, we're all inundated with signs, aren't we? Especially this last year. What to wear, where to wait, where to stand, how many miles to wall drug. There are so many signs that an important one can be very easy to miss. I confess that some parts of today's gospel I've missed my whole life. Maybe the stories are too familiar. After all, there are six stories of feeding thousands of people in the four gospels. There are three accounts of Jesus walking on water. But John's gospel is always a little bit different. I found one of these little differences this week and that led me to search for some more and think about what they mean. Well, the one that I noticed first, I thought was kind of funny. John tells us that the boy had five loaves and two small fish. Small is not included in most of the other renderings of this story, but it's as if it would not have been a miracle if Jesus had fed 5,000 men plus women and children with five loaves and two big fish. Those must have been some fish. Those are fish story fish. It's a reminder that this miracle account is not either about bread or about fish. Also interesting, at first it seems that nothing extraordinary happened. While they were eating, apparently nobody noticed what was going on. One might have thought that the people in the back, as the first people were being served, might have just assumed we're not getting there wasn't any lightning, there wasn't any thunder, there wasn't an earthquake, just a meal. The miracle just kind of happened. Another sign that no one noticed, that is, until they went and started gathering leftovers. Another aspect of the miracle is that God's leftovers add up to more than they started with. Twelve baskets gathered by twelve apostles, more food than Jesus and the disciples could possibly eat. So the story started with how to feed 5,000 people gathered on the side of a mountain at the spur of the moment. It ends with the unasked question, what to do with, five, or with 12 extra baskets of food? It's a new challenge. Everyone had eaten their fill, but nothing should be wasted. The only solution appears to be, well, let's go find others who are hungry and feed them. A basket of bread would feed several people. This could be an ongoing miracle. And what God provides satisfies not just our physical hunger, but our spiritual hunger as well. Unfortunately, it seems that feeding the hungry wasn't on the crowd's mind that day. But they did notice that they had been given another sign. This is indeed the prophet who is come into the world. And John tells a story saying that all of this happens as Jesus and the disciples were traveling home to Capernaum in the north after having been in Jerusalem to celebrate the High Holy Days. After the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, then Jesus goes off to pray and the disciples get in a boat and set sail across the Sea of Galilee toward home. Now the Sea of Galilee is 13 miles long and 8 miles wide. The scripture tells us that the disciples had rowed less than halfway home. Then the wind came up, the sea began rough, began to get rough, it was dark, and the disciples then could see Jesus out there walking on the water toward them. It was another miracle, this time one they could 
immediately recognized was a miracle. They took Jesus into the boat, and another miracle happened. But not the one that we think happened. Not the one that's mentioned in the other renderings of this story. If we read carefully, John's telling is different again. Did you notice it? We're expecting it here that Jesus calmed the stormy sea. But that wasn't read today. After all, well, God's dominion over the waters is a theme in the Bible starting with the first chapter of Genesis, so we, we almost expect to hear that, but not this time. Instead, we get the miracle that is never talked about. Now, I think, you know, it's, it is summer vacation time for those of us who are traveling, those who travel by car, those who have traveled by car with young, impatient ones sitting in the back seat, know the anticipation of when we are there and know the anticipation of you know, if you're driving from the west say you've been in some place like wyoming or colorado and you finally you know you get to scott's bluff or you get to ogallala and at least i'm in the right state but we're not there yet still a lot of driving to do for the cycle still a lot of room to do in a stormy sea, after a long trip, yearning to be home, the thought of sleeping at their own home, in their own bed. Jesus gets into the boat, John says, and they immediately arrived at their destination. Somehow crossing some three, four, eight miles to get the rest of the way to Capernaum. It's a miracle like that described in Psalm 107. They were glad because they had quiet and God brought them to their desired haven. Me, those of you who know me, who have listened to me before, you know that I believe that miracles are happening all around us. But they're like so many other important signs. Sometimes they blend in. Sometimes we're not looking. Sometimes we miss them. Turn our backs on them or ignore them when they're staring us straight in the face. A miracle just happened. Did anybody see it? No, I wasn't paying attention. No one noticed until it was all over. And later, I wish that I had been paying attention. I really, really wish I had taken the opportunity to be truly present in a blessed moment. I wish I could go back and relive it. Miracles are life-changing events. Big and small, they happen every day. How many chances have we had to witness one? How many have we witnessed and not realized? How many have we witnessed and not realized till months, years later, what happened? How many times have we had a chance to be actively a part of a miracle? We were at the right place at the right time, but maybe we didn't have the courage or the fortitude or the faith or enough belief that it could happen. Martin Luther said that it is one thing to believe that Christ performed miracles. It is quite another to believe that Christ can do it for you. Belief, faith. What can we become with God's help? What can we do and become if we truly believe? What can we become if, if we have belief that leads to courage? What can we become with faith? What can we become if we open our hearts and minds and our lives to everything that Christ can do. Do it. Become it. Live it. Believe it. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Taste and see. Look and see. Live and see. Touch and see. Wander around with your eyes open, with your hearts open, with your minds open, and see and hear and feel Jesus working among us. Go forth with Jesus' blessing. Go forth to experience the many ways that Jesus wishes to encounter you this week. Go forth with God's blessing. Amen. Amen.